So in this picture, you can see that we've turned our blend of six-month-old compost and bedding pack material, a small amount of fresh scrapings from the dairy cow alleyways, yeah, along with um, a brown carbon in the form of wood chips and dried leaves that we got from a local tree trimming service. And we've blended that, that together with the compost turner, which is running here in the background. They're actually, right now, they, this farm actively turns their compost piles, but like I mentioned in another video, we're getting ready to put together two small 40 foot long windrows of aerated static piles. So this is a oxygen rich pile, but that is not turned. So, um, and then later on, we're gonna go ahead and try and convert one of those partially blown aerated static piles to an anaerobic pile using the Jerry Gillespie method, and I'll talk about that in another video. But I'll go ahead and start this video here. And the method that, or construction method that we're using is actually comes from the Quiliara, if I'm saying that correctly, coalition. So that's Q-U-I-V-I-R-A coalition dot org and you can get information there and as you see in the picture we have like a six inch bed of wood chips and on top of that then is another layer of wood chips and it's really important to create this I'll call it like a distributed air plenum so that uh, actually in the picture I'm going to show you in a minute here of the cutaway. They, they use less wood chips, but I decided to make this somewhat wider to cover a decent portion of the bottom of the pile. In the, uh, we had actually done one previous pile where we used corn stalks for this um, open or bedding for air to be distributed into the bottom of the pile through and used a lot of wet material on top of it from the bedding pack barn and the material crushed down and we didn't get the blower going right away and it just became a wet soppy mess on the ends of these this is four inch perforated piping on the ends of these, we run a section of four feet of just the solid green four-inch PVC with a cap on it so that we can actually pull a cap off and look at what's going on in there and make sure it's not filling up with water like we had the first time around. But you can see here I've got, it's probably close to a foot. I wanted to make sure that we didn't run into the same issue before and we could actually see what the results would be in blowing the material from the bedding packs. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a This is from the Quiviera Coalition, and this is the layout that they describe. You actually have, and you'll see this in actually in other videos too, but I just wanted to show you this. This is a six inch solid green sewer PVC, so that's less expensive stuff. It goes to a T here. Then we used a rubber four inch fern coat coupler to go from six inches down to the four inches which, which is what you need for one of these jump inexpensive jump tent for kids blower and uh, the six inch then is reduced down to four inch and these are two 40 foot runs 
So that's four 10 foot lengths of the white perforated piping, PVC piping. And like I said, at the end, we ran a length of uh, four, four foot length of four inch green PVC pipe, sewer pipe with caps on the end so that to make sure that it's stuck out from the end of the pile so we could pull the caps off and look at what was going on inside there. And let me go ahead and show you a picture of what the cutaway again looks like. Again, this is from the Quiviera Coalition, and here's how they describe making the piles. These piles actually aren't that big, and if you're doing it to scale, this method can be scaled up, and there are videos online showing that where they have piles that I, I believe start out to be, be like 12 to 15 feet tall, much larger blowers, and so on. In fact, um, one of the questions that we wondered was, you know, if this does work, how do we scale that up? And in that video I was just describing, by the way, before I switch here, they, they talked about, the Quivier talks about using wood chips on the top, which we did, and I would not recommend that because it, the wood chips are good in terms of holding moisture, and you do want to hold the moisture in and keep your compost at that 60% moisture level. Otherwise, if it gets too dry, the composting just, the piles won't heat and they won't break down properly. So... The trouble is, is you have a lot of wood chips in with your compost, and if you're doing this in scale, you're going to have plenty of compost to use to actually cover your piles, and that's what I would recommend. Although, like I said, you really do need a medium on the bottom here where air can move through it and it won't crush down too much, and wood chips seems to be a nice solution for that. But if you want to do this to scale, actually... Um, you can get this very thick-walled uh, DR11 or 17 and, uh, and perforate it. This is a picture from a video online showing that and some of the notes that I took when I was looking at the video. Um, and this piping is thick enough that they actually, when it comes time to pull the piles apart, they actually just wrap a heavy chain around that pipe and attach it to a tractor and just pull it right out. So that seems to be a really nice solution in comparison to other operations where they're blowing aerated static piles in scale where they have a concrete pad and precast gutters with grates on the top and a very elaborate system this uh, dr11 or 17 piping seems to be a much better way to go so i should mention that you know one of the advantage also mentioned that one of the advantages of the wood chips is that, you know, in this operation, and they're going to have to change this around some in order to meet uh, DNR regulations, but, um, you know, you don't want your compost sitting in static water. Here I'm just showing what the mix looks like after we've turned it with the wood chips and the bedding pack material and so on. So you can see there's a decent amount of, you know, I'll call it brown carbon material in there as well as a good amount of manure. Um, but anyway, you don't want your pile sitting in static water, so if it rains and stuff like that, you really have to have the topography right so that that water runs off. Elaine Ing Ingham has talked about how she's gone to operations where they they seem to be doing everything right, and yet when their lab results come back, they come back high in pathogens, pathogens, and they're trying to figure out why. And it's because 
either the material sitting in water, some small amount of materials sitting in water, and then when that gets turned and picked up and tested, um, it just spikes the pathogen counts, or um, or they're not setting their compost turn in the in, in the application where you're doing an actively turn pile, so that it's actually just scraping the surface of the ground, and there's a layer at the very bottom of the pile that has gone anaerobic that's not being mixed because it's not being mixed in, and when then when they go and scrape the pile, and get that tested, it comes out high in pathogens. So. Yeah, topography is really important, and we tried to pick an area where, you know, it was fairly level, and like I said, the wood chip bedding on the bottom there not only serves to get air in, but also helps to minimize that issue of having a layer of anaerobic, meaning devoid of oxygen, microbes growing, because of course those are the ones that are tend to be path or are path can be pathogenic so yeah so i just wanted to show the materials that we're using to make our aerated static pile we we're using four inch green solid sewer piping and white perforated it's actually a cellulose a cellulose in it piping on the end, each end, it's the four-inch green sewer, solid sewer. One connects to a six-inch solid green plenum piping that you can see here. And the other end actually sticks out the pile and has a cap on, so you can expect it, inspect it. I'm not sure that we really like the cellulose in the PVC for the perforated piping. It did tend to crush down a little bit and become a little oval. And... Um, the six inch solid green PVC then is connected with a rubber fern coal coupler to reduce from the six inch down to four inch, which is what you need for these inexpensive blower tent blowers. This is brand name in particular is Zoom, but you then need to wire that to a timer and the timer has to be able to run for short periods so anywhere from let's say 15 to 30 seconds every 30 minutes so that's our particular setup